great privilege that I'm able to introduce uh, Dr. McKim today. He's an associate professor in the Department of Medicine at the University of Ottawa. He's medical director of the respiratory program at the Ottawa Hospital Rehabilitation Centre. Additionally, he's the associate director of the Ottawa Hospital Sleep Centre. Dr. McKim has had several honours throughout his, tr throughout his career, and one I'd like to highlight is in 2008, he was awarded the Dr. David Green Award for recognition by Muscular Dystrophy Canada of service to patients with neuromuscular disease. Dr. McKim has several areas of research interest. One is being airway management and neuromuscular disease, which we'll get to hear a lot about today, and the other is non-invasive mechanical ventilation. So Dr. McKim, we're very interested in learning more about these topics, and thank you very much. Thanks very much, uh, Laura. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Dr. Bigger, thank you very much for inviting me to come and, and speak to you. I feel like I, I already know quite a few of you, and it's, um, it's unusual to come uh, from out of town and feel like you're being rooted for by the home team, which is it's very, very nice. Um, I uh, wanted also to let you know I'm not at my, my best. I, I love to come down to Toronto and stay with my brother who is uh, just off the um, old, old mill stop. Um, but his futon broke about 2.30 this morning. And I'm not sure I got back to sleep after that. So if I'm a little slow to respond to some of your questions, uh, that's why. Um, and it's really, it's my privilege to, to be here. I, I, it's really the other way around. I don't think it's so much an honor to have me here. It's, a, it's my privilege to, to be here to talk to you uh, today. And I've had the pleasure of uh, knowing many of you already uh, who've taken the uh, trouble to come to Ottawa. And I think really what we need to do is change that and uh, uh, have a focus of uh, expertise here so that folks are not having to make the trip up there. So respiratory issues in Duchenne muscular dystrophy and in other respiratory, uh, neurorespiratory conditions uh, are really among the most important uh, issues. Uh, and at least in Duchenne, they're fairly predictable. Um, but like many conditions that change over time, anticipation is really what's, uh, what's important. If you try and adapt for the moment, what you've adapted will not be useful for very long. Uh, so you need to be aware of uh, technologies that uh, are available. Uh, and one can think about four respiratory phases in um, muscular dystrophy. Uh, early on when respiratory function is essentially uh, normal or with sufficient uh, reserve. Uh, subsequently where respiratory function is adequate but cough may be very weak. Uh, and subsequently when there is inadequate breathing overnight and the final fourth stage where uh, respiratory impairment may be present for 24 hours a day. So there are no real special respiratory needs uh, in the earlier stage except that it's important to recognize uh, some airway clearance techniques if necessary, uh, if there are respiratory infection, uh, regular immunization is important, and certainly screening of pulmonary function is important. Uh, during the uh, second phase where pulmonary function may have declined and cough may not be adequate, it's very important to learn some of the cough techniques that, uh, if you don't already know, will be reviewed uh, later on today. And again, regular pulmonary function is important to monitor that, in particular peak cough flows uh, in order to prevent pneumonia just from a relatively benign upper respiratory tract infection. And we know from uh, fairly early research that uh, a mixed population of neuromuscular patients experiences a loss of vital capacity, uh, a reduction in respiratory muscle function, uh, reduction in oxygen levels, and potentially an increase in carbon dioxide associated just with a simple viral upper respiratory tract infection. So that while capacities may be adequate uh, when well, um, they fail an individual just when they need them most. So it's important to have uh, preventive strategies in place. Now there's several kinds of respiratory muscles. There are inspiratory muscles, expiratory muscles, and of course breathing in requires sufficient muscle force. And if the respiratory system is uh, small and stiff, then the respiratory force may not be enough to uh, produce an adequate inspiration. So mostly the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles and a few other accessory muscles are important for inspiring. 
Expiring requires the abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis, the transversus abdominis, and these are important for generating that positive pressure for, for cough. And the glottis, the, the larynx, is also important for uh, closure and generation of a positive pressure prior to cough. So we take a deep breath, generally, completely fill our lungs, close the glottis or voice box, we squeeze that volume down so that we get what's called an isovolumetric contraction, suddenly pop open the glottis and get these very high expiratory flows. So it's the, the shear forces of that flow that take secretions off the airway and clear them from the lung. So this is a uh, example of what's, what happens during uh, coughing. Here's inspiratory flow, flow stops, there's expiratory muscle pressure, and then so there's no change in flow. The uh, glottis pops open, and you get this very high expiratory flow that gradually uh, diminishes, and you often get some closure of the airway. And at points where there's closure, there's actually acceleration of flow, which it, it itself serves to clear secretion. So this is a normal uh, cough. But if you have weakness of respiratory muscles, then you, you may be unable to take a full uh, breath. Uh, similarly, if your abdominal muscles or your glottis is weak, you may have difficulties closing the upper airway, generating that positive pressure. So that can lead to retention of airway secretions, which then can lead to infection, pneumonia. And when you have limited respiratory reserve, then that's enough often to bring someone to the emergency department or worse, the uh, critical care uh, unit. So what can we do about it? Well, in fact, it turns out we can actually do uh, quite a bit. Uh, the simplest method of increasing cough flows and airway clearances to do a manually assisted cough. So after a full breath, uh, pressure is applied to the uh, abdomen, the upper abdomen pushing in and upwards, uh, and this increases the expiratory flow when it's timed with a cough. Uh, this can also be assisted by uh, increasing the volume prior to the cough using a handheld resuscitation bag or other methods that we'll talk about, like glossopharyngeal breathing or mouthpiece ventilation. If peak cough flows remain inadequate with those methods, then the mechanical assist may be helpful with using the uh, cough assist device. And again, we'll be reviewing that uh, later uh, this morning. So why, just to help you understand, why might it be difficult to cough? Uh, this is a normal flow volume loop. So uh, normally one takes a full breath in. This is into the spirometer and then takes a full, forceful exhalation out all the way to an empty lung. If you have inspiratory and expiratory muscle weakness, then the lung volumes become very restricted so that peak expired flows are very limited. We can use a handheld resuscitation bag, which has a one-way valve in it, another valve uh, with the um, valve removed to keep this first one-way valve from being uh, extruded into the, uh, the oropharynx or the airway. It's most often applied through a mouthpiece, but we can also use a resuscitation bag if there's such oral weakness that the mouthpiece can't be held. And this can be used to augment.